degrees and finally move to a very small town in the middle of a cornfield. I leave someone behind. I tell myself I have worked so hard I can't choose a man over a career. I want to choose the man over the career. I rent an apartment, the nicest place I've ever lived as an adult. I have a guest bathroom. I don't save lives, but I try not to ruin them. <laughs> this is the dream, everyone says. A good job, tenure track. I have an office I don't have to share with two or four people. My name is on the engraved panel just outside my door. My name is spelled correctly with one N. I have my own printer. The luxury of this cannot be overstated. I randomly print out a document and then sigh happily as the printer spits it out warm. I have a phone with an extension, and when people call the number, they are often looking for me. There are a lot of shelves, but I like my books at home. In every movie I've ever seen about professors, there are books. I quickly unpack three boxes, detritus I accumulated in grad school, sad drawer trash books I'll never open again, but I am a professor now. I must have books on display. It is an unspoken rule. I put a dry erase board on my door. Old habits die hard. Every few weeks, I pose a new question. Currently, what is your favorite cocktail? Best answer, free. <laughs> <laughs> the department's administrative assistant gives me the rundown on important things. Mailbox, office supplies, photocopy code. I forget the code weekly. She is friendly, patient, kind. But if you cross her, there will be trouble. I vow to never cross her. There is a mind-numbing orientation that begins with a student playing acoustic guitar. A threatening sing-along vibe fills the room. The student is not a singer. Most of the audience cringes visibly. I hide in the very last row, and for the next two days, I accumulate knowledge I will never use again. It's like math all over. I'll be teaching three classes, two of which I've not quite taught before. It turns out that when you say you can do something, people believe you. <laughs> 10 minutes before my first class, I run into the bathroom and vomit. I'm afraid of public speaking, which makes my job very difficult. <laughs> when I walk into the classroom, the students stare at me like I'm in charge. They wait for me to say something, so I stare back and wait for them to do something. <laughs> it's a silent power struggle. Finally, I tell them to do things, and they do those things. I realize I am, in fact, in charge. Teaching three classes requires serious memorization when it comes to student names. The students do tend to blur. It will take nearly three weeks for me to remember Ashley A and Ashley M and Matt and Matt and Mark and Mark and so on. I rely heavily on pointing. I color code the students. You in the green shirt. You in that orange hat. I get my first paycheck. We are paid once a month, which requires the kind of budgeting I am incapable of. Life is very unpleasant after the 23rd or so. I've been a graduate student for so long, it's hard to fathom that one check can have four numbers. Then I see how much the man takes. Oh, damn the man. Students do not know what to make of me. I wear jeans and converse. I have tattoos up and down my arms. I'm tall. I am not petite. I am the child of immigrants. Many of my students have never had a black teacher before. I can't help them with that. <laughs> when I was a student listening to a boring professor drone endlessly, I usually thought, I will never be that teacher. One day, I'm delivering a lecture and realize in that moment, oh, I am that teacher. <laughs> I stare out at my students, most of them not taking notes, giving me a soul-crushing dead-eye stare that still haunts me, that tells me I wish I were anywhere but here, and I think, oh my god, I wish I were anywhere but here. <laughs> I talk faster and faster to put us all out of our misery. I become incoherent. Their dead eye stares haunt me for the rest of the day, and then longer. Walking down the hall, I hear a young woman saying, Dr. Gay, over and over, and I think, that Dr. Gay is rather rude for ignoring that person. I turn around to say something before I realize that she is talking to me. I worry some of my students don't own any clothes with zippers or buttons or other methods of closure and fastening. I see a lot of words faded and stretched across asses, bra straps, pajama pants, often ill-fitting. In the winter, when there is snow and ice outside, boys come to class in basketball shorts and flip-flops. I worry about their feet and their poor little white toes. <laughs> Helicopter parents email me for information about their children. How is my son doing? Is my daughter attending class? 
I encourage them to open minds of communication with their children. <laughs> I politely tell them that there are laws preventing such communication without the child's written consent. consent. The child never consents. <laughs> Sometimes during class, I catch my students staring at their cell phones beneath their desks like they're in a cone of invisibility. <laughs> it's as funny as it is irritating. Sometimes I cannot help but say, I do see you. <laughs> Other times, I confiscate their electronic devices. Sometimes when students are doing group work, I sneak a look at my own phone like I am in a cone of invisibility. <laughs> I am part of the problem. Suddenly, there is a plague on grandmothers. The elder relations of my students begin passing away at an alarming rate one week. I want to warn the surviving grandmothers. <laughs> I want them to live. The excuses my students come up with for absences and homework amuse me and how ludicrous and improbable they are. They actually think that I want to know. They think I somehow need their explanations. They think I don't know they're lying. Sometimes I simply say, I know you are lying. You say it best when you say nothing at all. I try not to be old. I try not to think when I was your age, but often I look at my students, and I do remember what, their, what I was when I was their age. And I look at them, and I think, oh, when I was your age. Thank you.